I'm just going to choose to believe that the election was stolen and everything that he says, because I kind of like burst, based my whole personality on supporting Donald Trump. So I'm not going to maybe accept the option. You live in We're going to f Brandon today. Turn it off. Yeah. Let's f him. Well, folks, it's Tuesday, the day that Trump said that he was going to be arrested. And there's this feeling of anxiousness and, dare I say, excitement in the air as we all wait to see if it's actually going to happen. Now, unfortunately, at the time that I record this video, it still has not happened, although I'm still holding out hope that it will happen. Although Trump supporters are crossing their fingers, hoping that this doesn't actually come to fruition. And they're trying to do everything in their power to dissuade officials in New York from making this decision. For example, CBS News reports that there's been an uptick in online threats towards law enforcement, judges, and government officials in New York, and a bomb threat was even called into a New York courthouse just moments before they heard New York Attorney General Letitia James's civil suit against Donald Trump. So there's that, which was to be expected. And there were also barricades put up in Manhattan to prevent Trump sycophants from violently rioting again. But one thing that I didn't necessarily expect was the number of anti-Trump protesters showing up to support Trump's potential indictment. And according to some reports, the anti-Trump protesters actually outnumbered the pro-Trump protesters. Now, Newsmax caught one of these protests on camera and their cope was very predictable. Interestingly enough, we bring you this live shot here. We know the uh, former president has called for, for protests in a peaceful manner. Um, many Republicans push back on that. But interestingly enough, it's the opposite side that's outside protesting now, saying insurrection, TikTok, time's up. No one is above the law. Trump is guilty. Again, many supporting the possible indictment of former President Trump there um, again yeah, those we'll signs really look like they were made by the grassroots grassroots groups too don't they john yeah we'll continue to follow that again barricades have been put up and yes because the only way protesters can obtain large banners is if they are funded by george soros we all know that's what he's thinking it's predictable any protest that they don't like is funded by George Soros, or they've been infiltrated by the feds, or both. But there was a mix of pro-Trump and anti-Trump people in New York all over the place. But one thing that I didn't necessarily expect was the uptick in comedians showing up to, um, I, I guess you could say, guide us through this news that we may or may not witness, because this is indeed historic. So Jason Selvig of The Good Liars and Walter Masterson both showed up to different areas in Manhattan and they trolled the Trump supporters. And what they managed to accomplish here is, I think, as historic as Trump's possible indictment. And I'm being a little bit hyperbolic, but let me explain here. So at one location, the pro-Trump right side broadcasting network was there and an interviewer was talking to different Trump supporters about their thoughts on the former president's possible indictment. When all of a sudden, comedian Jason Selvig kind of finesses his way into an interview with them. And while the person whose interview he interrupted recognizes him as Jason Selvig from The Good Liars, so a troll, the interviewer doesn't really seem to be on to him until the end of the interview. Let's watch. The thing is, the DA, Alan Briggs, won't even comment on it. He hid in his office all day, and then while we were waiting for him for five hours and the media wanted to talk to him because he's changed some felonies to misdemeanors and changed some misdemeanors to felonies, and is specifically prosecuting Donald Trump when he, didn't, he did very little wrong, if anything. He's hey, prosecuting. Look around the city right now. I mean, there's crime everywhere. Hey, good right? liars. What's up? How are you? Good to see you. There's, good? there's crime everywhere. And I think like this is a political prosecution. It, 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 it has to be right. Like that's that, that's the only way it, it could be happening right now is if they're going after him political politically. The only other option is that Donald Trump lost by seven million votes and is a loser who can't deal with the fact that he, he lost the election because he based his whole personality on being a winner and calling people losers. Uh, so, so as you think his attitude, his approach, his personality is what is 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 what got us in this mess in the first place, potentially, or I'm just going to choose to believe 
that the election was stolen and everything that he says because I kind of like burst, based my whole personality on supporting Donald Trump so I'm not gonna maybe accept the option. You live in you live in the city? I live in the city, yeah. 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 So how has the city changed over the last couple of years here? I mean I know crime but I don't live here so I don't I can't judge whether or not it goes, it's gone up or down. Yeah, the New York City I think is maybe 59th in, in crime right now. I think there's four cities in Indiana uh, that has have more crime statistically than New York does. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I haven't really noticed a lot of crime, but I, I do see it. And on you know Fox News, they say it's it's much more dangerous now. I don't. See, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen any more crime. So like maybe that's it might not be true. But I I'm going to choose to believe that it is true because I, I, I did see that on Fox News. Yeah, of course, because whatever you see on Fox News is true, right? Yeah. Well, and just like CNN and MSNBC. If you see it on if you see it on cable news, it's got to be true. Donald Trump said CNN and MSNBC are fake news. Okay. That's right. We got to. Use of fake news. Okay, so what do you what do you expect today? I mean, we're, there's a lot of media here. Uh, there's a lot of people just like you, just like this gentleman here, Braxton. That is that is that is that is. That is uh, that have come out here and check everything out. So yeah, there you go. Uh, so I mean, what's your take on it so far? I mean, there's a lot of people out here. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of media. Um, I would say just it's basically all media, and I guess there's uh, Bra is it Braxton? Braxton, and then I see another guy with a flat. It seems like there's about 10 Trump supporters here, but mostly the rest are, are media. Yeah. You think you're scared to come out here. I don't got to be honest with you, Braxton. I, you know, I, I'm not sure where Make America Great Again on the, on the streets here. Well, I think here's what it is. You know, a lot of people are saying maybe it's going to be like a, a false flag operation, like January 6th. Like Donald Trump told everyone to be in D.C. on January 6th, and then everyone afterwards protests, right? right exactly. Yeah. And and then like it it turned into like a riot, and I'm I'm wondering if like if people come here. If they're worried it's going to be a false flag, even though Donald Trump told everyone to protest, they're not showing Absolutely, up. Yeah, not planning on showing up. I had one guy here. They actually, let's turn the camera real quick. He's still yelling at this young lady. Oh my God! I tried to have a conversation with him earlier, and oh, it was impossible. Really? But as soon as the camera stopped, it was normal. Oh really? So go think. You know, think yeah, about that for a second. About that. There's something <laughs> weird about that. Well, we appreciate your time. Yeah, First thing, what was your name? Brian. Brian. With right side. Big fan of right side. Oh, I appreciate I'm it. You're very nice. Jason, thank, thank you, Jason. Nice to meet you. All right, I want to bring. In, um, our very own. Okay, hang on a sec. Let's let's go over here. Hang on a sec. I got Mike Crispy with me. Let's go over here. Let's walk and talk for a second. So as you saw towards the end of the interview there, he was very clearly trying to get away from Jason because it was clear that Jason wanted to talk. Now, I don't know if that interviewer picked up on the fact that he was being trolled, but there was also a commotion happening behind him. There was somebody that was there that was being loud and, I guess, trying to debate the Trump supporters. So it could have been that they just moved away from Jason to film that. But either way, Jason was not done with them. And as they were filming this loud confrontation between a pro-Trump person and an anti-Trump person, well, Jason cuts in again to bring up QAnon. Show the See, pe normal people don't behave like this, Who Brian. You're nobody. You? I don't even know you. Of course you don't know me. So why are you coming in my face? Why are you following me? Thought. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so you know, like there's there's the QAnon, like you. QAnon that right. keeps saying there's going to be all yeah, these arrests and they never happen. Right. Have you noticed that? I'm not a follower of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe this is the arrest that they were talking about. Maybe we should get the maybe hell out of here. What, maybe it's like trust the plan. Maybe this is the arrest maybe right now. Donald trust Trump. the plan. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah maybe so. That, what you, what's your thoughts on a guy like that coming out here screaming? Well, you know, he's here. He's he's nonviolent. He's he's screaming. As long as he doesn't get physical, I think that's all right. You got a First Amendment right. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you guys. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. No, but, right. Brian, I mean, you know, all these people here are peaceful. All these people are exercising their First Amendment. And it's always one angry, depraved, wacko leftist who comes out here and stirs up the crowd. And they want to fight. They want it to turn violent. Masterful. Just masterful. Now, I watched the actual stream itself. And after they got away from Jason, the RSBN host moved far away from all of that crowd. So that way Jason wouldn't come back. I think that towards the end, he probably picked up on the fact that Jason was trolling him. But I just, I love the way that Jason cut in as they're filming this confrontation. It reminded me of this meme from The Office. Donor. <laughs> Is that not perfect? Now, in a different area in Manhattan, specifically outside of Manhattan's criminal court, Walter Masterson was there and he was also trolling Trump supporters. 
But he took a very different approach in that he didn't infiltrate one of their broadcasts. He tried to co-opt the message and blend in. But as you're going to see, they were a little bit taken aback by the particular message that Walter Masterson uh, was, <laughs> was shouting. Just watch. We are here in front of the courthouse where they're going to illegally arrest Donald Trump. We are here to fuck Brandon. <laughs> We're going to fuck Brandon today. Turn it off. Yeah. Let's fuck him. The look on his face there. <laughs> He knew at that point in time that Walter Masterson was fucking with him. There's there's no way. You know, the first time he's like, okay, we're trying to say fuck Joe Biden. You were a little bit off there, but let's try again. And then repeatedly, Walter Masterson just repeats, yeah, I want to fuck Biden. And I, I think that he kind of picks up what Walter, oh, Walter Masterson was putting down. But this next clip was great because you don't see Walter Masterson. And I believe that this was shared on Twitter by someone other than Walter Masterson, although he retweeted it. But he kind of just blends into a crowd and you hear a chant. But amid that chant, you also hear Walter Masterson with the same message. And this had me rolling. That might be my favorite clip of the entire year because <laughs> there's like multiple people <laughs> they're chanting, let's go, Brandon. And Walter Masterson is louder than all of them. Like you can, <laughs> you can hear Walter Masterson saying, I want to fuck him. And he's, he's louder than them, which is just, it's amazing. I don't, I don't know how he does it, but he blends in and they don't suspect it. Although I, I would assume that they realized that he was trolling towards the end there where he talks about, yeah, I want to fuck Joe Biden. It's just brilliant. So look, folks, I don't know what's going to happen with regard to Trump being indicted or arrested, if that's still going to happen today. But either way, this news, um, it definitely helped me. The news being that comedians infiltrated these events, because I think I speak for everyone when I say that there's a little bit of anxiousness in the air, as I stated earlier. It's it's palpable, right? We all don't know what's going to happen. Everyone, for different reasons, is kind of um, anxious about the possible news of Trump being indicted and or arrested. But either way, news like this, it's just more lighthearted and it makes me feel um, at ease about the situation, knowing that I can feel confident that the memes are going to be absolutely dank and fire in the event Trump is arrested. Because, I mean, he hasn't even been arrested yet. Just the possible news has led to hilarious outcomes. So imagine if he actually is arrested. Get your memes ready. It's going to be absolutely a fun time on the internet. We'll put it that way. I'm going to come. Do not come. 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 Welcome to the Come Zone. Come. Uh, 